Hey everybody, Angry Enemy Fan 2 here to bring you Young Justice uh, review of ep oh, episode 6, the 13th ep ep episode of the second season. Yes, looked through it, so my memory may be vague, but whatever. It starts with Artemis. Uh, this is my full thought about it. Artemis uh, begins to reflect on her life, and she regrets, has second thoughts that she really went undercover. And I must say I was angry at that. She thought she and Wally had a good thing going. Come on, you can never escape your superhero life. You're only selfish about that. But um, uh, then uh, Simon tries to, uh, well, is going to look into the mind, but Artemis uh, as Tigress stops that because if he does, he will find out all the more. Unfortunately, that little dose that makes him catatonic, uh, that's going to make him, uh, may, instead uh, makes him detect that Tigress is Artemis, and he almost guesses the whole thing. Well, almost the whole thing. Uh, but he guesses at least that Artemis is really undercover. But he passes out, but he will wake up in three weeks or whatever. Elsewhere, the Green Marsh Beetle is still being questioned. Uh, again, still shaken and telepathically does some telepathic uh, communication with the uh, the Green Mar with the Green Beetle. However, the Green Beetle instead talks to her, and uh, he in reveals that he knows that he she is a White Martian and all that making it seem like the Green Beetle actually has second thoughts. Thoughts? I mean motives! Whatever. Or, uh, or he senses that uh, uh, McGann really is shaky and that's why he volunteers. Elsewhere, well, uh, he then reveals that the drug will come will com contain some kind of virus or whatever that's gonna make uh, the earth bowed down before the reach without fighting back and suppressing metahumans which is one of the reasons why they weaponized the metagene, the reach I mean El then McGann and Lagoon Boy later leave and Lagoon Boy begins to anger angrily talk to McGann, Miss Martian of her weird behavior and st and judging from what this episode I saw, it seems she didn't reveal anything to Superboy when she he visited her. Uh, I mean, her in her uncle's apartment. Sorry about that slip of words. But in an, a previous episode, Superboy visited Miss Martian and said, "McGann, can we talk?" I thought she would reveal what she saw there. Or may or did she? Yeah, maybe she <laughs> whatever but then it uh, turns out that uh, since Simon is out they mean Miss Martian I mean uh, Black Manta Tigress so Tigress begins to t teams up with Deathstroke and together and while she still talks to uh, you know Deathstroke she, she ah yeah. sorry about that what I mean is while she and Deathstroke fights Lagoon Boy, she talks to Miss Martian telepathically to simulate their fight. Is it sexy? The, the two girls fighting? A little bit, maybe. Oh, yeah, and we hear Deathstroke, uh, the one who is famous in Teen Titans, a slave talk in this uh, show. And if I have read r right, it seems that... W w Sorry, I need to look at his name so I can know how it spells. Wentworth Myler voices Deathstroke, and he's famous for prison, prison Break. Can you say fitting match? Yeah, he is a good match there. Lagoon Boy breaks his leg, and well, they clean up Miss Martian. And uh, then the Black Manta threatens Miss Martian and reveals that she must fix uh, Aqualad's brain. Uh, even but she's reluctant, reluctant because apparently it's easier to break a mind than it is to fix it, or maybe that is, uh, of course, it's always easier to break stuff than it is to fix it, right? 
He then uh, uh, Lagan Boy is in a hospital and he's desperate in saving Miss Martian. But uh, and uh, Nightwing and Superboy are there too. And so, uh, Nightwing reveals that Artemis is Tigress and uh, Aqualad is undercover. Both of them are undercover. The two duels, of course, get angry, but first Superboy defends uh, Nightwing, so, uh, so, but he lashes at him when they go outside, saying that you have no idea what your secrets have done to us. And he reveals to Nightwing that, uh, apparently, m that Miss Martian cr fried... Uh, uh, Aqualad's brain, which makes my when I said earlier the what they really talk about the, in the apartment. When he reveals that, I, I, I can almost guess that Miss Martian talked about that. But still, I wonder if she, he re <laughs> if he f find it out uh, from McGann that. Uh, yeah, you know, the Aqualad was uh, good and all that stuff. Well, inside the Aqualad's brain, uh, Artemis and Miss Martian tries to fix it, but they and it's a fragile mind of Aqualad. And there we see Tula. <laughs> Quite fitting, huh? Tula is the safeguarder of uh, uh, Aqualad's brain, which explains why we saw. Tula in in a in a trailer yeah in a new trailer we saw Tula and that raised me some questions and apparently this may answer that she's a psychic guardian or a brain guardian uh, Artem Artemis tries to find Aqualad while Miss Martian tries to fight Tula but can't. Artemis finds Aqualad, but he is faceless and he has difficult talking. He, she managed to get through a little to him, but the mind link stops. Aqualad gets a little bit better. He uh, says father, which means that he's a little bit more aware. But apparently McGann reveals that this will take days, even weeks. Yes, it's the same it will take for Simon to get healthy. And with that, a black mantra is satisfied, saying that once McGann is had done her job, she will die. And Artemis is perfect, perfect. And I wonder. She said a similar line when she discovered she was to team up with Deathstroke. But what I'm trying to say here is, was that really a oh no, perfect, or was that oh yeah, perfect, when she said it in her mind? Probably, uh, oh no, uh, well, Artemis is good, but, you know, uh, and, uh, yeah, in a side quest, or another important side quest, Green Beetle tries to fix uh, Blue Be Blue's scarab, uh, but B Green Beetle warns Blue Beetle that it can be dangerous, but Blue is, of course, paranoid, and uh, wants this to happen. After a while, Green apparently does something, and Blue reveals to Impulse, who stops the Green, that the Scarab is silent, and he's free now. All that Impulse can say is, Crash. And now I wonder, is that how it all will end? I mean, uh, if, uh, the Scarab sure have had a pretty violent personality, but uh, I really think that S Scarab was the good guy here. And now when Green has shut the Scarab off, I mean, in mute or whatever, I have a feeling something very dangerous will happen. But whatever, the two guys now, the two guys, Lagoon and Superboy now know Artemis secrets. And, uh, well, McGann needs to fix Aqualad's brain, if that's going to be possible. Simon is catatonic, but he knows the secret. And, of course, the other are still vengeful. What is going to happen? I have no idea. We still haven't got a plot for the next episode, but I have a feeling it's going to be about the, uh, these uh, new other kids. The Medellin kids. 
whatever, that's my thought about this chapter. Uh, I say it was good. I just didn't like uh, hearing Artemis complain that she and Wally had a good thing going. You can never escape your superhero life. That's what I'm saying. Other than that, this was actually a pretty good episode. Still to see that Megan is actually suffering for what she did. And uh, that, uh, it's a, it's, it adds a little bit of tension. And of course, that, that the blue blues bill now is fixed or whatever. That actually caused some questions. Oh yeah, there was a commercial in this uh, episode about uh, the reach being so friendly whatever apparently Jason Marstein did a singing voice did you think it was good? it was okay for me and here I can almost say that Yuri Loventhal who voices Lagoon Boy you know that right? Uh, he's not so bad in listening to as Lagoon Boy he really has that voice yeah I know that was a bad voice but come on give me a break that's uh, all I have to say about this episode probably uh, something I missed but you know Watch the episode itself and see what you think. Bye.